The Squad Automatic Rifle. Oh, such a young channel and already controversy. I'm Dr. Christopher Larson, a veteran of the U.S. Army Infantry, founder of One Shepherd Leadership Institute, and author of Small Unit Tactical Doctrine. Nowhere do you see this, this horrific, even malignant fallacy um, rear its ugly head than when we start talking about platoon and squad weapons. You've heard of a rifle platoon, a rifle company, a rifle squad. Well, the reason they called them rifle units um, were that they had rifles, and th that's it. No, no kidding. Prior to World War I, many of the industrialized nations, all the way up to company level, 120, 150 uh, soldiers in a company, and that was a rifle company. And it meant that everybody, their primary weapon was a rifle. Machine guns were in machine gun companies. Grenadiers were in grenadier platoons and companies. They were special, they were different. But inside the rifle company were the rifles. And you see this change radically um, for all, virtually every military during World War I when they started saying, hey, no, hold on, let's integrate the machine guns down at company and even platoon level. Let's, uh, let's integrate the grenadiers into the squad. That creates this this is the same sort of fallacy. You've heard it. If a M4 carbine is the same as an M27 IAR, and an M27 IAR is the same thing as an M249 squad automatic weapon, SAW, or SAW, then the M4 carbine, for all intent and purposes, is virtually identical to a belt-fed machine gun. I'm not sure I can agree with that. And if it were true, then we wouldn't need combined squads, combined armed squads, platoons, and companies. We just need rifle companies again. If in fact a carbine is the same thing as a machine gun, light, medium, or heavy, and they aren't, and so this is where a lot of it uh, starts to break down. Let's define our terms. What do I mean by machine gun? And why did I refer to the M249 squad automatic weapon as a machine gun? Well, one reason I refer to it is that um, Fabrique Nationale in Belgium didn't design it as, a, uh, as an auto rifle. They designed the thing as a machine gun. Everybody says, oh, but it fires 5.56. Five, I don't care if it shoots BBs. The fact is, it was designed as a machine gun. And here's how we define machine gun. We can use many different metrics, but I will say that the most critical metric you want to use is the type of fire from the weapon, the types of fire from that weapon. Is it sustained high volume fire? Is it intermittent medium volume fire? Is it accurate low volume fire? Is it precision low volume fires? Sustained, intermediate, accurate, precision, high volume, medium volume, low volume. You have to define that. Machine guns are created for sustained high volume fires. Here's how they do that. First is the barrel. They either have a water-cooled barrel or they have a quick detach spare barrel. You see this in the M249. You saw this in the M60. You see this in the MG or the MG3 and the PKM. You see quick detach spare barrels so that you can heat up one barrel, pop off the crew can pop off that barrel and then put on a new barrel so that they don't damage the weapon system. So the barrel is very important to look at. The next thing you want to look at is how are they feeding their ammunition. This is There's a whole lot more variation here, but basically machine guns are either fed through belt or box drums as a general rule of thumb. Rifles are fed through magazine fed, so are auto, you know, auto rifles, and so are um, designated marksman rifles. They're magazine fed. And then stability. Well, machine guns are set in, to hook into a pintle, either into a vehicle, turret or onto a tripod. They have T and E and pintles and they are incredibly stable. The auto rifle, not so much, really just bipods. Uh, 
like you see behind me. So just bipods. A rifle rarely even gets bipods. Even a designated marksman uh, rifle may not have uh, bipods. It might. So you have your stability issue. Finally, we can start looking at some other variables. Who's it issued to? Well, a machine gun is issued to a crew, and their maneuverability is, relatively speaking, low. Um, and that's because of the weight. Look at the light machine gun. A light machine gun, with all of its complement, is 60 pounds. That's spare barrels, tripods, pentoles, and its full complement of basic load ammunition comes in about 60 pounds. That should be shared over a three-man team. And remember that the other two members of the team are carrying their weapons and primary weapons and their ammunition as well. So it's not simply 20-20-20. No, it doesn't go that way. So you can see that uh, the weight of a machine gun, light machine gun, 60 pounds, a medium machine guns, most of them come in right around 105 pounds. A heavy machine gun comes right in about 360 pounds. This is shared over a three to five man team. And they have to set up the weapon system to get it running, and so therefore maneuverability is low. Now think of the auto rifle. It's issued to one person, just like a DMR, just like a rifle or carbine. The auto rifle weighs in anywhere from 20 up to 39 pounds. Uh, for example, your M18 BAR, right? M1918 Browning Automatic Rifle was a beast. The rifle itself, I think, weighed 19 pounds. You put in a full complement of ammunition and its bipods, and you're already up to 39 pounds. Fortunately, all other auto rifles since then have been considerably lighter, but they still break 20 to 25 pounds when you consider their ammunition and the weight of the actual weapon system itself and any targeting systems it has. So, uh, but still, it's maneuverable because it can still be carried by one warrior, right? Just like a rifle, 15 to 20 pounds is very common, unless you're up at uh, larger calibers, it might be as high as 23 with your basic load. And then your designated marksman rifle comes in very similar, somewhere right between your rifle and your auto rifle. That's a whole lot of information, but what it means is this, machine guns need crews and don't have the maneuverability. So right away, the M249, belt fed, can be mounted on a pintel for vehicle or tripod use was intended to have a spare barrel, weighs in with its basic complement of ammunition at 60 pounds. Does that sound like a auto rifle to you? And if it doesn't, welcome to the club. It's not an auto rifle, yet the United States Army never fully appreciated that. And they even bullied, to my understanding, the Marine Corps, who understood that the M249 SAW was a light machine gun, but eventually, the Marine Corps adopted the Army's attitude towards the saw, regrettably. And the saw then failed, because it was a machine gun trying to do, play a role of auto rifle that it could never fulfill. Well, fast forward. The Marines are kind of dropping the ball here. They looked at the M27 IAR, Individual Automatic Rifle, or Infantry Automatic Rifle, and uh, they were trying to replace an auto rifle took a good hard look at it and said, why doesn't everybody have this? Once again, showing a fundamental misunderstanding of what an auto rifle is and how it adds and bridges gaps within a combined arms platoon and combined arms squad. If that isn't, hasn't convinced you, then maybe we need to back up just a second and say, the most critical difference between each one of these weapon systems in a squad and platoon is their priority targets. And yes, this can be reassigned for a mission, but this is what they generally default to in most unit SOPs. The Grenadier has the highest priority for hardened targets. I'm talking specifically bunkers and vehicles. That's their number one priority. Yes, their medium priorities are massed troops. That's troops in the open or anywhere they're massed. Um, they do fire against crew-served weapons, you know, rocket launchers, machine guns, mortars, they certainly engage them as well as medium priorities. And then low priorities would be command and control, such as your RTO and commander, your nearest threat. And in fact, grenadiers might have problems with the nearest threat, just depending on how near it is. But there you go. What's their highest priority for the grenadier? Hard targets. Think bunkers and vehicles. A machine gun. What's the highest priority? Massed 
troops. Troops in the open. Machine guns fire a cone of fire that has the greatest impact on troops in the open. Likewise, their medium priorities, hard targets, bunkers and vehicles, and other crew served weapons. Those are medium tar uh, priorities. Now here's where it gets really interesting. The auto rifle. What do you imagine the squad automatic rifle having as its highest priority? And it might surprise you, but this was very well panned out through virtually all of the theaters of World War II, but specifically Europe and Pacific theaters. Um, and then well into Korea, sure enough, this turned out to be the successful um, ace up our sleeve. The auto rifles priority, highest priority by default, are crew served weapons. Auto rifles are machine gun killers and mortar killers and rocket killers. And there was a specific reason here. Let's back up. In Korea, we really saw this um, doctrine mature. And the North Koreans, had, and mostly Chinese to be fair, uh, had learned, hey, we see how the Americans are using their machine guns. They run them forward, they set them up, they get them into, uh, into the fight, and they're very, very effective. We need to stop them from doing that. So they would use uh, their machine guns also, but they would couple them with light mortars. We're talking 40 millimeter, 60 millimeter trench mortars. And it turned out to be incredibly uh, powerful because as soon as the machine gun, the Americans would bring up their machine guns, they would be pinned. And then of course the mortars would start to fall in on them and they, couldn't, and they, they just couldn't set up and get into the fight. The Chinese had learned our doctrine and were intentionally uh, mitigating our doctrine. It was the Browning automatic rifle that allowed um, that squad to send two of their Browning automatic rifles out to the flanks to pin and then destroy those machine guns and mortar crews. This happened time and time again. Specifically, the auto rifle was a machine gun killer or a mortar crew killer or a rocket crew killer. That's what they went for as their highest priority. They had medium priorities of the nearest threat and massed troops because they fire for very short periods of time very quickly. Now, fully 50% of your squad and platoon are made up of riflemen carrying rifles or carbines. That, that's what they're made up of. 50%. What do you think their number one priority is? And if you guessed, well, it's the nearest threat, you guessed correctly. Thank God we have 50% of our force focused on who's closest to us. I don't care what you are. I don't care what weapon system you're carrying. Whoever gets closest gets my bullets. And that is your, your rifleman. Um, again, making up 50% of our force. And if you doubt that for any moment, go ahead and look at the United States Army's qualification for rifle because unless it's just changed yesterday, it was beat into our heads. You always shoot the closest target. Now recall that in our um, qualification, you can have single targets pop up, and that does happen, but you also have multiple targets pop up simultaneously. And it is told to us and beat into our skulls, shoot the closest threat. Grenadiers are hitting your hard targets, your bunkers and vehicles, as their highest priority, and yes, they have mid and low priorities. Machine gunners are shooting massed troops as their highest priority, and yes, they have uh, mid priority targets and low priority targets. Auto rifles are seeking out crew served weapons, enemy crew served weapons, and destroying them. They too have mid priority and low priority targets. Designated marksmen are shooting command and control nodes and resources, again with mid uh, priority targets assigned and low priority targets assigned. Finally, riflemen um, using rifles and carbines are engaging the nearest threat. I'm not discussing the exception to the rule, I'm discussing the rule. And if you don't understand how an auto rifle is very fundamentally different from a rifle or a designated marksman rifle, if you don't understand how an auto rifle is fundamentally different from a machine gun or a grenadier, then you can fall into the uh, fallacy that A equals B equals C, and therefore A equals C. It doesn't.